And uh, welcome to Between the Post Finals Edition. Tommy Javor here, your host, joined by our Division 4 expert. Welcome, Callum Knox. Thank you, TJ. It is great to be here. For, great to have you here. You've given up your time on our Father's Day edition. Of course, it is Father's Day Sunday. And we, I want to give a big shout out to those that got us here. So to my late father, Big Tom, Tom Senior, the Croatian politician, Salisbury Member of Council. You're a superstar. Took me water skiing every weekend. I love him. I miss him. Been gone 10 years, but... We still think about him every day. But to your dad, Big Kev, black belt in judo, yes. down the barrel. Say something nice about the old oh, man. I love, I love me, Big Kev. Uh, take me to all the, the footy trainings, all the games, coming out to everything, uh, and it's showing just all the gratitude in the world. So I yep. love Big Kev. And he won't come on camera, but Hugo, our editor and producer, his dad, Mark, he wishes him a, a very happy Father's Day. Put him through Scotch College as well. It's a fair commitment to loving your son. We're going to be pretty quick today because he wants to shoot off and actually spend some time with his dad. But we love what you do, Hugo, and well done, Mark, for raising such a fine young man. But let's get on to, well, it's a little bit of sad news, unfortunately, because yesterday you had the chance to go up to Division 4 when you took on Mitchum and uh, Mitchum were too good. They were, TJ. Um, it was it was a big day for the club. Obviously, we I think as a group, we say that we deserved to be in Div 4. Um, so we wanted to get the, the quick way straight into the grand mm. final, but couldn't get the chocolates. Uh, Mitchum, they were too good. They got us early, uh, and they just flexed their muscles. Their disposal efficiency was fantastic. They they scored when they needed to, uh, unlike us. So yep. and not ideal, but they're, the good thing, there's always next week. There is. String is the pride and plenty of talent down there, and... You'd be, you'd be trying very hard to get another crack at him, no 100%, doubt. 100%. 100%. Yes. Now, yesterday, I was back on commentary. I was so excited. It was Golden Grove and Payne of Nord Union in the elimination final. You can hear all about that, obviously, in the Div 1 report. But, oh, it's so good to be back on commentary and uh, just realising what a great job the Adelaide Footy League now does with its streams. Yeah, I know. The, the, the few commentary that I've listened to, TJ, you just, you just bring an aspect that I love. So, <laughs> good, Thanks, good, mate. good on you. Very kind of you, mate. I'm looking forward to next week, of course, being out at um, Web Oval for the big second semi, or QF2 as they call it now. Uh, let's have a look at what we've got on this week's show. Uh, obviously, women's footy is finished now. We've congratulated uh, Gary McTosh and his, his girls' team. They were out at the ground yesterday having silly, very silly Saturday, I might add. Well done to them. Division 1 Premier's Payne and Nord Union. Um, we've got the Division 1 report. Of course, we've got the goals and marks of the week. What else we got, mate? We've got my Division 4 report where we'll, where we'll be talking about the two games uh, and the preview for the prelim, what a game that's going to be, and also the favourite segment, what caught our eye. Yes, we'll have a look at all seven divisions. We've both got themes. My theme is called Welcome to the New Division. So all of that, of course, and much, much more on this edition of Between the Posts. Welcome back to Between the Post, Division 1 report time, and it was finals footy, and I'm so wrapped to say I was there. I was part of the stream team for Golden Grove and Paynham, and we saw a little bit of an upset. Golden Grove 7-15-57, PNU 8-14-62. The player in footage we're going to have a look at in the long sleeves is number 14, Jed Spence. Why was it an upset? Because Golden Grove had won seven of their last nine, and Paynham, whilst fighting for a double chance, actually hit a trough in the uh, towards the back end of the year and lost games to top-end teams like Port District and Glenunga. The goal kickers, Pasco kicked two, as did Banwell for the Kookaburras, whilst for the Falcons, it was Spence and Catalano with a brace. Golden Grove led by at quarter time by nine points, but were very inaccurate going with a breeze. What, what, what's fair to say was a swirling breeze, and... Paynham took control in the second quarter, leading at halftime by 14 points. The scoreboard said Paynham 4-5, Golden Grove 1-9, which just speaks volumes to that, how important it is to take your chances in Division 1. Paynham would have a six-point lead at three-quarter time and hung on to a five-point lead at the final siren. They were three goals up with not too long to play, and Golden Grove came, and it was an exciting finish. He goes on the left. Here's Pasco. 55 out. He's going to play her out all on his own. He's going to get, he's going to run into open goal. Holy goodness, we've got a game here at Harpers Field. In the end, Paynham didn't secure the victory till about 20 seconds to go when they took a mark in their forward line. 
If you've got nothing better to do, and if you've got something really good to do, I implore you, go back and watch the last 10 minutes of the game, as I'm sure the coaches will be doing. It was amazing. To be part of that, I felt honoured to be able to call that game. The thousands of spectators, the pain and women going cocoa bananas in the pocket, the CMB grades getting, there was just energy, there was excitement, and I think the production of the actual um, game itself was really well done. Big shout out to the entire Dart Fish and Filming Footy team. Like most games, it's often won in the midfield, and it was, I thought it was really well articulated by Jeremy Cheney in his pre-match interview. Let's have a little listen to what Cheney's had to say. I'm with the coaches of Payne and Norwich Union, Jeremy Cheney. Welcome, mate. Thank you very much, Tommy. Excited to be here, mate. It's a tough one. I'm not sure what you can give me, mate, but where do you think the game will be won and lost today? Oh, look, I think the midfield battle is going to be huge with both groups. Um, we, we, there's certainly some plenty of talent in there. And uh, then it's probably just the ability to go forward and score. So uh, we'll just wait and see how it unfolds, Tommy. And it was indeed where Paynham won the game. It was Spence, Nunn and Aunt Giannini who got on top of their opponents, Shenton, Pittman and Glenn, and managed to curtail their influence. They really paired off hard on Glenn at the stoppages in the middle because he looked the most dangerous, but they were able to break free and run in waves, the Paynham players. They looked fit and they ran on top of the ground. It was a really impressive midfield display in the way they worked both back and forward. Um, in ruck, it was Mothersole versus Robinson. Um, I felt they probably broke even. Hodge is giving Mothersole a chop out. I want to apologise to, to Robinson. I did get your name wrong a few times. I got the wrong name caught in my head and that's, that's not good enough by me, so I do apologise for that. Um, we had a goal of the week contender. It was an absolute barn burner. It was Grant Catalano from the forward pocket. A crucial goal in the third quarter. Yep. And I tell you what, the amber fluid, the Han, no carbs, kicking in for the locals here, and they've got plenty to say. Quick kick, one, inside out kick. He has it, has he? He has! That absolutely without a shadow of a doubt. Looking at the better players, Golden Grove, their best player was clearly Josh Gillen, but he kicked one goal five, what could have been if he was a little bit more accurate. He wasn't the only one, though. Thatcher down back was the best defender. Dobie very good. Bamwell bobbed up with two, and Shenton tried all day in the middle. For the Falks, Spence, Jackson Martin. I need to talk about this young man. Quiet in the first half, but went and did a job in the second half when there was an injury to um, was Dobson. Um, and he had 13 touches and six marks in the final quarter. He had his moment and changed the game. Really formed a great roadblock and was brilliant. And McKenzie, down in back, he is the architect. That left-footed weapon, the cannon, he uses it. They put the ball in his hands and he delivers. He gets behind the ball and looks at the play and is brilliant. I don't want to give away Falcon secrets, as I'm sure the opposition coaches will go back and watch the stream. But what he did, the Golden Grove kicked 15 points. He took the kickouts and he's able, he makes really good decisions and PNU's ability to transition from the kickout to the forward line and create inside 50s was super impressive. So a big shout out to McKenzie. Not named in the best, that might have been a bit of Ducks and Drakes. I thought he was very, very good. Um, all in all, um, a, a great game, a pleasure to be a part of. Jed Spence was named best on ground and of course you see him there with the Archies. So bad luck to Golden Grove, their first year in Div 1, they can be very proud. They came up against a former Division 1 Premier and probably the experience got painted through to the second week of finals. In our other game, it was Sacred Heart at home, 7 goals, 6.48, getting done by 16 points by Port District, 9, 10, 64. Our player in focus is one of my favourites, the gaffer, Cooper Gaffney, number 25 for Port District. Across halfback, he was outstanding, especially after quarter time. It was Port by 43 points at three-quarter time, so they had probably wrapped the game up. It was the Premiership quarter where they did the damage. Five goals, four to one point. In the final quarter, shock blow showed plenty of heart, came back and kicked four goals, three to no score, but it was too little, too late. There was a bit of a breeze, of course, favouring 1M. Um, better players for uh, Sacred Heart, Bo McRae, again, back in the best players. He came back from a knee injury late this year, and it's great to see the blonde bombshell come back and, and really contribute for the Shockers. Brooks, uh, young Charlie Hilliard, little surfy looking fella. He's a young star. Had the pleasure of coaching him. Great young man. Good to see here a real consistent body of work being put together by him. And Seb Kerrish has had a great season. For Port District, Captain Sean Davidson was named best at the club. Uh, he's a rock back there. Matty Rose, Dinehoff, Mitch Gaffney and Carter. Um, Nash Haynes' game was very good as was Louis Sharrod. Port kicked the first two goals, two of the game, and really were able to put that gap in and they were able to control the game from there. Just a quick look as well at Cooper Gaffney, a very happy man with his thongs. So well done to Port. They go through to what used to be called a second semi-final. Now is QF2. They will, of course, take on the Rams. But before we get to that, just a couple of quick ones. Um, the medal count. The Keith Sims medal count will be this Tuesday night 
at 8.15. Good luck to all players. I could list off all the, um, all the candidates, but you know, we're looking at, in my opinion, Abe Davis, Matty Nunn, and Joey Haynes are the three to beat. But who knows what the umpire sees? It'll be really interesting to have a look at that one. Good luck to everyone involved. And our winners and prizes are coming up as well. In prelim final week, we'll have the team of the year. The best 22 players from Division 1 will be named. Locked in. I'll be doing that with Adam Jeffries and all the other commentators. Just getting all their input and having a bit of a chat with the, quite a few of the coaches just to make sure we've got things right. So we look forward to that. The other announcement in the Div 1 report is a huge congratulations to the Salisbury North Football Club. They knocked off for us Trevor this week. Of course... Div 2, a week behind Div 1. They are through to the grand final and therefore they return to Division 1. Well done to the Hawks, not just their team on field, coach Luke Harble and the off field team who worked for many years to get them back on and in Div 1. Division 1. That's David Hood, Simon Warner, Daniel, the venue manager, Damien McBride, and so many more. It's going to be great to see them back in the top flight. But let's have a look at this week's games. We'll start with the stream team. It doesn't get no bigger than this. Glenunga and Port at Webb Oval. The teams have met twice this year in round three at Largs Bay. It was Glenunga who were all the rage early, winning their first 16 games, winning by eight goals. In round 12, it was a little bit different. At Webb Oval, Glenunga could over the line just by four points. They did lead by as much as five goals. In the last quarter, they didn't score and Port kicked three goals three. They were coming, coming, coming. Glenunga just holding on, which should give Port District a lot of hope that maybe, maybe they can just unravel the spider's web that is Glenunga. Glenunga at home going for a lazy, wait for it, 21 in a row. You have to go back to a final in 2022 when I was still at the club where they got beaten by just four points by PAC who would go on to make the grand final. My tip... Well, this is a tough one. I'm taking Glenunga because it's at Webb. There'll be a bit of a fact-finding mission, I think, for Coach Ramsey and Port District. I wouldn't be surprised if Port get the upset, but I'm taking the Rams to perhaps go one step further than they did last year. First thing they've got to do, though, is get there, and I think they will. In our other game, it's a spot in the prelim final. It's Sacred Heart versus PNU. Now, they played PNU twice this year, and in round two, they won by four points at Shock, and in round 11, they won by 22 points at PNU. So they match up pretty well against Paynham. Paynham would be chock full of confidence. If Shock can not curtail the midfield influence of the big three, Paynham will cause an upset here. But, and oh, they won't like me again for saying it, but I think Jeremy Cheney is going to be happy for me tipping it. I'm taking Sacred Heart. There's a reason why they finished second, about three games clear as well. They were the second best team all year, and I think they will just get their finals campaign back on track and make their way through to a preliminary final. Shock in an absolute thriller for me. This is Tommy Javor with the Division 1 report. I'll be back next week with some more exciting Division 1 finals action. Get a quick and easy low-rate car loan from Police Credit Union today. Adelaide Footy fans, TJ here with a Between the Post exclusive in just two weeks' time, prelim final week. Watch out for Team of the Year. The commentators are meeting, we're discussing, we'll be chatting with coaches. We look forward to seeing who will be the lucky 22 representatives that come up as the Adelaide Footy League's Team of the Year. Between the post, it's for all you Division 4 fans out there. Div 4 report time. He's back for the second week in a row. Welcome back, Callum Knox. Thank you, TJ. Always a pleasure. First question, have you have you been on the phone last night this morning to Bubacino yes. and uh, got all the information I on Div 4? Been, I have been. I've been calling him up last night, getting in all the facts, all the talks. He'd be pumped the about the Dragons, he wouldn't he? He was. He was on the frothies. He was absolutely <laughs> loving it. No doubt. 
it would have been the Han No Carb, our sponsor's product. Oh, 100%, 100%. Less than one carb, 87 calories. Do yourself a favour, get it into right. you responsibly. Now, mate, there's obviously two finals games. I don't want to steal your thunder, but uh, we've got time to cover both games and talk about the prelims, so I can't wait to hear what you bring today. So we'll start off with Bubba's Boys, Westminster Old Scholars, 87, <laughs> defeated Morfitt Ville Park. 70. Uh, it was a close game, obviously, do or die for both teams at the Dragons Den. An interesting fact that Morphe's actually led at both mm. quarter time and half time. So they, they put themselves in good stead, but the Dragons, they stormed home at home in the second half, kicking at nine second half goals. Yeah, brilliantly done. I guess that premiership quarter, they've come from eight points down to go to seven points up, set themselves up, and uh, well, they'd be absolutely pumped. Yes, uh, best of field for Westminster Old Scholars, Aidan Rost, mm -hmm. um, graduated in 2021. So I went to school with him, and a big okay. fact about him, he was a state cross-country runner. So okay. there's no, uh, no denying how good he would have been on that wing. Mm. Um, and a best field for Morphys. Uh, was obviously Brody Trembath, who kicked seven. Out of 11, a fantastic. But we did talk about him on the final preview, yeah. how important he'd be, and he certainly can hold his head up very high. His dad, Lane, on Father's Day, would be very proud. 100%. Uh, my man, Nick Leck, uh, led the Dragons goal kicking uh, with two goals. However, I did have this is a bit of insight from uh, Bubacino, um, and he said that apparently he actually got heavily tagged by the Morphys boys, which it's it's not surprising at all. Yeah. Uh, but Jeremy Johncock, the the former Sturt player, he actually went into Leck's role, and while he's he didn't kick the amount of goals that uh, Leck did, uh, apparently he was assisting everyone and was just a real driving force for that forward line. Yep. Now Jeremy Johncock uh, has an has a different nickname to to his relation. He was Bubbles is his nickname. So so we can use that one on air. <laughs> Cl close to Bubba, but not quite. <laughs> Bo Bubba and Bubbles, it's all happening. Uh, sorry, mate, go on. No, that's, that is that is it for Westminster Old Scholars. It's, it's a great win. Um, obviously, over time last week, the loss, that would have been very heavy to take. In extra time. In extra time. And without ruining the next game to a team that's now gone up a division, mm. but they'll have their... Uh, We'll get on to the prelim in a little bit. Let me, uh, I'll just, you go, mate. Tell yeah. us a little bit about Plimpton and Kilburn. So Kilburn defeating Plimpton 79 to 66. This is a huge spanner in the works for our predictions. More more so mine than yours. You did predict. Oh, I knew Kilburn you would come did, in. You did, you did. And I know you've got plenty to give us, but I just want to shout out to Kilburn. Talk about celebrating the promotion. Last night, their socials lit up and then all of their contributors lit up, all their... Kilburn chick influences and they celebrated like they're pretty happy to be back in Div 3. So congratulations, Kilburn. It's great to see you back there. 100%. The double promotions, that, that is something special. I'm um, very keen to see what they do next year. The Cinderella story, obviously, it continues and they have one hand on the cup for now. Uh, Kilburn, they led it every quarter. Their largest lead was around 30 points, obviously. They had a big lead. Uh, they, the, the doggies, they did come back, though. Um, and they had Kilburn goalless in the last quarter, but obviously it wasn't enough. Yeah, my notes say they, they led by five goals. I think they were five goals, six at quarter time to not much, but they led by five goals at every change, and it's just so hard to make that up in a final. A hundred percent. I mean, the leading goal kicker, Zach Peake, he chimed in with two for the dogs, and Michael Housen kicked three for the chicks. Uh, interesting, last week I did say for the finals focus, Corey Solly, he didn't he didn't play that first final against Westminster, so I didn't know if there was an injury or something, but he did play. Uh, I'm very glad to see. I said he's a, a big, very, uh, a danger man for the chicks. Uh, he did chime in with one snag, so that that's yeah. always good. Great to see Sticks Housen still going around. That'd be he'd be a three time Premiership player. Left footy used to play on the long sleeve. Went up to country footy. He's back for the chicks and he's still very dangerous. One hundred percent. And Kilburn, I mean, they finished third. They went to the Dragon's Den. That's no easy task. Um, and the they, <laughs> they got it done in overtime. They then travelled to Plimpton. Again, not an easy task. Uh, and they, they got it done very professionally. Um, and last week, I, I, didn't, I didn't, they didn't back the chicks at all, TJ. Uh, and a week is a, a long time in football. So I do think that I may have just underestimated Kilburn. Yeah, and the thing with Kilburn now, they're in the perfect position to win the flag and they're good at this. They did it in 12, they did it in 13, they did it in their 100th year last year. But they do have an ageing list, there's no doubt about it, no disrespect. But guys like Nick Pearce in Ruckies, Eugene Sturt has done the, done the country rounds. Galbraith, Hill Chompers, he, he's getting on a bit. Um, Housen, Brackstone, all of these guys, they're very, very good, experienced, hardened finals footage player. And when it's their turn to go, they go, they'll put their head in their hole and they back each other. Just know how to get it done. They yeah. do. Yeah. They sure do. Uh, 
Moving on to the prelim, the preview Ooh. for the prelim. This and it's at a league ground now, isn't it? It is, yep. yes, yes. A neutral for both sides, that's mm-hmm. obviously good. It's obviously a huge game for both sides. I mean, it's sad that one of these teams won't be going up to Division 3. I mean, Plimpton, they've been top dogs all year, no pun intended. Oh. Um, but Westminster, I mean, coming <laughs> down from Div 3, they're always wanting to sling back up. Um, so, yeah, that's very interesting. What about the times that they've played each other this year, TJ? Well, funny you should ask. Um Round 10, it was uh, Westminster by 28 points, so that's a good form one. But um, back in round one, it was Plimpton by 10 goals. So when Plimpton were flying early. so But you're the expert, mate, the Div 4 expert. I wouldn't have a clue which way this one's going to go. Yeah, so in round 10, interesting, Nick Leck actually kicked six. Yep. Um, so I've got here, it, it's obviously not a match-up, but I think I'm very keen to see 1v2 in the leading goal kickers of the competition. Nick Leck versus Zach Peake. I mean, I think Zach Peake's sitting on 71 goals and Nick Leck 68. So I think if either one of these blows can get up and about, maybe kick five or six, really get loose, uh, I think that will definitely sway who's going to be winning on the day. Big players step up in big finals, so it'll be very interesting to see who it is. <sighs> who's, who's your tip, tip? Oh, you put me on the spot. I have to, I Look, have to. I know you've got, and we love what Booba offers and, and supports us. Um, we shouldn't give away our sources, but we can't ever with you, Booby. Um, Plimpton finished top for a reason, um, and they would be desperate not to go out in straight sets. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to go the Red Dogs, mate. I'm taking Plimpton. Yeah, Red Dogs, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a flip of a coin, really, at the moment. Um, I know who you're, you're going the Giants, I have to. I, I have to. I have to back Booba's boys. I've said it. I'm, I'm not going to shy away from it now. I can't back down. Um, so get it done, the Dragons, and yeah, hopefully uh, an exciting grand final to be, no doubt. One team, Hyundai Oval, which is, of course, the old Woodville Oval, um, or Oval Avenue just off Port Road there, so it'd be a great game to get to, mate. Right? Yeah, and that, that's all I've got for the Division Wrap. That's all you need to have. The winner, of course, will go through to Division 3, mate. You've been outstanding. You've butted up. I'm, I don't want to keep mentioning. Obviously, you had a tough day yesterday with your team. Yes. You're still alive, still alive. but you fronted up on Father's Day, mate. You've been outstanding. I won't see you again this year. I want to personally thank you for your efforts. Thank you, You're too, a good Jack. man. And uh, to the old man, Big Kev, you should be proud of this young fella. He, got, he gives great insight and great reports. Stay with us. We'll be back with more Between the Posts. Back to Between the Posts. This is a great segment because it's where we get to see the very best goals and marks of the week. And this time they come to us from finals, football and all divisions. Have a look at these beauties.
Welcome back to Between the Posts. It's time for what's becoming a very popular segment. It's What Caught Our Eye. Hey, give me that. <laughs> now, mate, I've got a theme, you've got a theme. We did converse um, did. during the week about would make sense with two games in most divisions. My theme is congratulations and welcome to your new division where applicable. And your theme and is... I'm talking about the elimination yeah, finals. Cool. Yeah. Exactly right. Good, <laughs> goodbye for the season, I guess we could say. So, so we're starting in Division 7 where it's... A, um, Again, it was OSB versus Hackham. This one, of course, was a prelim final. OSB 11 10 76, Hackham 9 660. Matty Hodge, that familiar name, best on ground. So, congratulations and welcome to Div 6 OSB Lonsdale. Interesting to note, mate, they were three points down at three quarter time. Oh, that's exactly what I was going to say, yep. OSB. Congratulations. Game, Copy yep. and paste. Yep. Yep. Yeah, beautifully done. They'll, of course, will play uh, Para Hills this week, this Saturday, at the parade, otherwise known as Cooper Stadium or North. How good for those Div 7 that's, footballers? That's elite, there? yes. Para Hills and OSB, what a game. All right, Div 6, you can go first, mate. Thank you. I uh, have Fitzroy winning by 46 points. I mean, the duo chiming in for three goals apiece, where Lachlan Dietrich and Josh Rosenthal are a big win for Long uh, Fitzroy. Fitzroy. Yeah, the Lions are roaring. Uh, we expected it and they did it, so congratulations. They are still pushing off to a prelim final yes. um, and this will reveal their opponents because we welcome to Division 5 the winners of the Div 6 uh, QF2. It was Salisbury 9-10, narrow margin, Eastern Park 9-6, Brad Pryor was the star. The Magpies now, including the minor round, are 19-0. They have the opportunity to create the perfect season, so their work may not be done just yet. Well done. Eastern Park, of course, will play, as you mentioned. Fitzroy. I'll go first this time. Mitchum 11 13 79. Colonel Light Gardens 3 10 28. Nick Collins, the star for the Hawks, mate. You were there. You played in the game. I don't want to rub salt in. Tell Thank us you. about it. Uh, yeah, just. Uh, Mitchum were too good, weren't they? Uh, overall, they were just beautiful with the kicks, beautiful with the hands. Scored when they needed to. Just the better side on the day. I'll put you out of your misery, mate. Well done. Colonel Light Gardens, of course, though. We're playing in the prelim this week, trying to get up. I should say congratulations to Mitchum. And welcome to Div 4. But the other game was? Uh, Marion versus Greenacres. And here we go. Talking about copy and paste. So Div 6, Fitzroy, they won by 46 points. Had two people who kicked three goals. Marion won by 46 points and had two people who kicked three goals. Patrick OD and Jackson Russell kicking those. So a bit of an interesting stat for you there, TJ. Yes, so it'll be Marion. You'll be taking on Marion, who you did beat two weeks ago. Yes. All right. Fingers crossed. Good luck, mate. Thank you. All right. In Division 4, it was, well, some might say an upset. I think I might have even predicted this one. Plimpton 9, 12, 66. Kilburn 11, 13, 79. Jay Moore, the star. They led by five goals every change. And Kilburn, they've celebrated like it's 1999 because they're off to Division 3. That is huge. Talking about Div 4. And I would love to talk about Bubba's boys. Obviously, they did get the win. Um, but I think even in a loss, it's going to be about Brody Trembath's haul of seven snags. Kicking 63.636% of Morford Field's score. <laughs> oh, I love a bit of data analysts. In Division 3, that juggernaut that is the Henley Sharks. 17-5. How good is that for kicking? Uh, that's not bad, is it? Another man that kicked seven was Brett Harland for the Sharks. Only Mercedes, a 12-7-79. It was only four points of difference at three-quarter time, but uh, Henley stamped their authority, and they're off to Division 2 from whence they came. I've got uh, Lockleys. They had a very comfortable win against Pembroke. Uh, and my what caught my eye was the former South Adelaide player, Penn, Ben Harron, and the vice-captain, Bowen Hosking. They combined for nine snags. So how about that for Lockleys? Um, a huge part of that win. Uh, and looking forward to getting into the grand final this week. Well, they'll certainly be trying against Andy Mercedes with both teams all the best. But in my opinion, the biggest game, pretty much apart from your Div 1 games, I guess you could say, is the, the, the game to get into Division 1, and that happened this week, and we have a new Division 1 team. It's Salisbury North, the Hawks, 12-11-83. Geordie O'Brien, their captain, was the star. The Ross Trevor, 6-14-50, a 33-point uh, win. Um, they led by about four goals at halftime, so they had control of the game. Ross Trevor not kicking a goal in the first half. Salisbury North, the Hawks, welcome and congratulations. You're back in Division 1 for the first time in about five years, I think, without checking the exact stat, but they, uh, they'll they be a force to reckon with next year. Uh, that's definitely huge. And mine's talking about Athelson. After keeping Flinders Park to just the one goal after the quarter time, uh, it's, it's going to be their win. But more specifically, the former McGarry medalist Mitchell Grid. 
Grigg popping up and kicking four goals. Yes, yeah, hard to stop. The class and quality um, certainly comes to the fore this time of year. And who knows what damage he can do next week against the Rocks in the prelim final to um, allocate the final spot for Div 1 in 2025. And we had the first week of finals, of course, Div 1 a week behind. It was Sacred Heart 7-6-48 at home, going down to Port Districts, as predicted, 9-10-64. Sean Davidson, the captain, normally plays in defence. Haven't watched the stream yet, looking forward to watching that. He was best on ground. So we now see Port District, they'll make their way to... The world of the game to try and qualify for the grand final against Glenunga. Yes, and I've got your old mob TJP and you. Mm. Uh, the upset against Golden Grove. Do you want to, do you want to elaborate more well, about that? Yes, I was there. I was at the game as the commentator. It was an absolute brilliant game. Um, seesawing game, Golden Grove in control early. Paynham took a rested back. But uh, Paynham looked at all but one. About three goals up with a few minutes to go, and then Golden Grove went bang, bang. Oh, oh the, it was intense. It was exciting. Oh, if you've got nothing to do today, even if you have got something to do, say, sit down, Dad. Let's watch a game of local footy. And watch yeah. the last probably 10 minutes of that game between Golden Grove and Payne. It was intense. The ground was full. Div 1 footy alive and well. So. How about that? That's, that's special. Yes. Well, that's been what caught our eye. I'll tell you what's going to catch my eye next week is if you and your mighty Lions can get that win, <sighs> I on. hope you do, mate, and you Thank get you. through to a grand final. Oh, I hope so too. Thanks for being joining us today and thanks for watching What Caught Our Eye. We'll be back with more next week. Thanks for joining us today on Between the Post. It is time for The Last Word, brought to us by Saypol. The first thing I always ask, Callan, every time is, have you had fun? Oh, the most fun, TJ, as always. And um, again, full credit to you for backing up what would have been a tough day yesterday for the club, and you've got up early on Father's Day to come in. I just want to make special mention of all our great sponsors. Um, we had a lot of sponsors yesterday supporting us on the stream, but the, the show itself and the league has a tremendous battery of sponsors. Um, mate, this is the last time we will see you. So personally, again, thank you for your work in Div 4. You've made it entertaining um, and engaging. Thank you very much, TJ. Anyone it's, you want to thank? In uh, it'd, be, it'd be rude last... if, I didn't, if I didn't shout out the big booba, yeah. um, providing insights when I can't be there, um, messaging me at 11 p.m. Yep. on Snapchat, just giving me a bit of inside info, which is always helpful. So, yeah, big shout-out to Bubba. And, and a shout-out to all of I don't give up my sources. We give up, Bubba, but I don't give up <laughs> any of my sources. There's people in every division, at every club who support me, who answer my calls. I, I, I'll give up one. Matt Bedgwood on a Sunday morning regularly answers calls to me when I've got lower division questions. He seems to know it all. Um, and I want to thank him and everyone that helps us with the show. So they're, they're really important. Um, Paul Lowe as well. Shout-out to him. C Great Synopsis co-host. Unfortunately, got done yesterday. Pain and got done by Broadview, but but uh, it was good to see him at the ground. Um, so this week, mate, it's a big week for you. Tell me where you are and what you're doing. So we're at St Mary's, Kenilworth, and uh, playing Marion, do or die. Winner goes into a grand final, gets promoted. Loser. Losers off to Mad Monday. Five. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, huge game. Beautiful. Now, uh, this week I'll be back on the streams. I thought you might ask, but you didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> it, uh, it is, well, it's, I'm calling it game of the century. I've been, Phil Hurd predicted it pre-season. I jumped on board about round two. It's the grand final preview for mine. I could be wrong, but Glenunga versus Port. Glenunga just about the most impressive Div 1 team I've ever seen. Port with the most Div 1, impressive Div 1 list. So what happens when they come together? It's going to be huge. There's only four points of difference last time at Webb. Glenunga going for 21 in a row at Webb. That's not a bad record, is it? <laughs> it's, it's not too shabby at all, is it? <laughs> no, nah, so I'm looking forward to that. Make sure you check out all our streams. And uh, thanks to Adelaide Footy TV. Um, Dartfish, Filming Footy and all the people that support us and that brings Between the Posts together. Thanks for watching us on this Father's Day edition. We've just got one final little treat. Now I'm joined by a couple of very special guests and there was a survey done recently to find out who the best dad ever and I believe the results are in. Isabella, who was it? Tommy's a boy. Oh, Indy, what did you get? Daddy boy. Well, I'm not sure how official these surveys are, but I'll take it. Thank you so much. And from all of us here on Between the Post, we'd like to wish all you dads a happy, happy Father's Day. Day.